Welcome to a very special entertainment rundown for September 2022 on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. As always, we are joined by our entertainment pundit, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate. Michael Nichols Pate, how are you? I'm just living the American dream over here. You are living the American dream and I am living the Canadian dream. And that's why we work so well because we live in a fantasy world where everything is perfect. Delusion. Delusion is not just a state in Ohio. That's denial. Wow. Look so close, babe. So close, a city in, city in Ohio. I don't know anymore. It's been a long month. I've had COVID. I've had, I've like gone through the emotions of this whole world in the COVID realm. But how are you? How's life? How's liberty? How's the pursuit of happiness? Busy, 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 busy. I'm running all over the place, doing a whole lot of things. I overbooked myself this fall, which I didn't want to do, but surprise, here I am overbooked. Um, but it's great. It's fun. It's a vibe. It's a journey. We are, <laughs> we, we are drinking a lot of coffee and going from there. But you, uh, let's start with the biggest news that out of both of our worlds, and that is our man, Mr. Michael Nichols Page, attended this year's, I, I think I can say this year, I don't know much about it, but D23, the Disney Comic-Con for nerds who enjoy Disney. Whoa, not a Comic-Con. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's just a convention. There's, <laughs> well, I can't even say there's not comics, but Disney owns Marvel Comics because Disney owns everything. Um, yes, <laughs> I did. They own everything. They own everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> Affected my soul, RuPaul. Anyways, <laughs> woo, crazy today. Um, so you went to yeah. D23. How was it? Because you, uh, you, I, from what I understand, and please correct me, and if I'm wrong here, you flew in like the day it started, and you flew out the night it ended. So it started Friday. I flew in Thursday. Stayed over at my friend Joe's house. Um, had with some, your mom. With my mom. Uh. My mommy came. It was great. Um, and then, like, got to reconnect with some beautiful, fabulous LA folks. And then immediately at like five a.m. the next day, after we watched She Hulk the night before, we drove down to Anaheim to go to the convention and did all of Friday, all of Saturday, all of Sunday, and then took a red eye Sunday night and came back <laughs> and landed in New York Monday morning at 11 with no sleep. Woo! Party. And you went to work the next day. Yeah, I did go to work Tuesday. I Because no sleep for the wicked. Go Went to work and had a dress rehearsal or a tech rehearsal for the show I was doing that week. You have been I busy. Just, the, I've been busy. The, he is not lying. We have not talked that much this month because our schedules have not been aligning. But I want to talk about D23 because you were there, you were on the ground, you got to see the sights, the sounds, and the ears that were shall not be mentioned because they got pulled from the shelves. But how was D23? What was it all about? It was great. It was a lot of fun. It's just it's a weekend if you love Disney, like love, 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 love Disney. It is the weekend for you. It is the convention for you. It's just all of Disney and their subsidiaries just hopping up and putting up little stores. They have like exclusive merchandise, like different companies that are affiliated or to Disney lines and Disney collections go and put their stuff there. There was like a giant Hulu booth where I got to be a Kardashian, which was amazing. Um, they had like little photo booth moments. This year was a lot of little photo booth moments, which I don't know how I feel about it, but um, hey, uh, that's the direction Disney wanted to go. Instagrammable moments, they succeeded because it was a lot and the whole Hulu booth was different Instagrammable moments. Um, you can get like free, a lot of the booths do little free like Disney collectible things. Like I got a bunch of different pins and you also get to see a lot of what's up and coming at Disney. So the first day I got to sit in on the, uh, a panel where they showed all of the stuff coming over the next two to three years for animation, Pixar, and um, the live action stuff. So we, later that day when they released the clip of Le Little Mermaid with 
the tr teaser trailer, we actually got to hear the entirety of the part of your world. Oh my God, it's going to be so fucking good. That movie's going to be amazing. And that hit the social media realm and the social media, the TikToks and the Instagrams and the Snapchats very quickly and but I don't know. I, I downloaded Snapchat again for the first time in a while. I'm assuming it's a big thing because people seem to still be posting on it that I follow. Your Gen so. that's a Gen Z thing. Wow. 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 Your Gen Z. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, but it made the rounds. People yeah. were happy. They were impressed. We all saw the the blind reactions of little girls reacting to the uh, Black Mermaid. And people were overwhelmed by the response. While you were there, I've got to ask the million dollar question. Because sure. we, we can't ask million dollar questions without asking the million dollar questions. You were in the audience when the trailer dropped, when the song dropped. Was the reaction as big as you expected it then, or was it more subdued? Oh, no, it was it was a big reaction. And that's the thing. When they cast her, I got to see her in 2016. They, her and her sister, um, they actually have a music group, Chloe. And her Callie. is Halle Berry, right? Halle Bailey. Bailey, sorry. Um, Chloe and Haley, Halle have... Uh, their duo group, Chloe X Halley, and they opened for Andra Day. And so I got to see them on tour and they're incredible. And so when they announced her being cast, I knew she, I knew she was going to be so fucking good. And then getting to see the entire clip, uh, myself, my friends, everyone in the audience was like, okay, fire, like iconic, show-stopping, legendary. Like that was one of the coolest moments seeing that kind of play out. Um, we also got to see a lot of now, clips from Take Haunted me through Mansion. this for a second. Oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. Take me through this for a second because D23 is like, Disney is the king of keeping um, things locked down before it gets released on the World Wide Web or however you want. Do you have to give up your phone when you walk into the convention hall or what's the process of that? Because I can imagine if you're going to any other event, everyone's pulling out their phone and recording what was just done for you. Was there any restrictions on what you could or could not record while in these convention halls? So, you know, those yonder bags. Yep. They'll sometimes they'll give you one of those and make you put your phone in and lock it. This time around, they did not do that, which I think was a little foolish because things have leaked that they didn't want leaked. Like you can find the entirety of the part of your world, which they were like, you cannot film this. We will throw you out if we see you filming it. Well, it happened because they didn't use the yonder bags. Um, but they had people walking around with like viewpointers. And if they saw any like those like infrared, pop, yeah, infrared things, and if they saw it, they would come over, grab you, and pull you out because they pulled a couple of people out. Here. Did you actually see people get pulled oh, out? Oh, yeah. Oh, I would have oh, loved that. I would have just laughed. I'd be like, ha, ha, bitch. Incredible. I love it. Um, but I also have found out that while Disney keeps a lot of stuff under wraps, stuff that has been announced, people didn't know. Like, they rolled out the red carpet and, like, did this whole Jamie Lee Curtis surprise thing for the new Haunted Mansion. And I'm like, that's been announced for, like, months. Did you know Jamie Lee Curtis was going to be in it, though? In the little, in the movie, yes. In the little buggy, no. Okay. Because they rolled out one of the like Haunted Mansion buggies with it turned the back of it facing and everyone went, who was behind there? And then they spun it and it was Jamie Lee Curtis and she went, and then the guy got in it, the director, and then they rolled off. She didn't say a damn word. <laughs> and she <laughs> probably like, got legend. about $2 million for that appearance. No, she probably didn't get paid for it because it probably was one of those mandatory press things they have to do. Which she probably got $2 million just for the mandatory media press that she has to do for her $10 million salary that she probably got. Yeah. She's a great actress. I have nothing. I love her. her. But like, it was really cool because it's a lot of like bringing out the cast, bringing out the crew, that kind of stuff. Um, the next You were we one got... person. Did you get to everything that you wanted to? Yes. The, on the only thing that yes. I, I, I kind of took you by surprise and you were shocked was when I told you about the High School Musical season four, because it truly is the multiverse of madness because a High School Musical, the musical, the series, which is the Disney Plus original show, 
is coming back for season four and in season four they're the the kids are gonna be playing parts in the high school musical the movie for and they're part of the cast and the cast is going to be filming the cast. It's just a very confusing storyline. But when I told you that you were like, I didn't hear about this. And I was like, Oh, I thought like, this was like, I thought it was all in one big convention hall and that's it. But it sounds like there was more than one room going on at the same time. Yeah. So there was about six different rooms, all that had like a lot of them were like giant convention halls, like the main convention hall, was where we had a lot of the big announcement stuff. Then there was a, another one that was bigger that was a little, but it was a big kind of hall, but it was smaller than the main hall. Um, the premiere stage, that's where we got to see like the Muppets 30th anniversary of the Christmas Carol, which that's the, like the one thing I really needed to do. And I got to do it, it was so happy, but I feel like I got to do everything I wanted to do. I mean, I wish I could have cloned myself because like the high school, the musical, the series like panel, I didn't get to go to because there was one that I wanted to be at more. I think it was the Disney princess sing-along. So I gave up that to go listen to Susan Egan sing uh, the phone book to me. Um, okay. She's Tony nominated Susan Egan. She was the voice of Megara. And she was the original Belle on Broadway. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I yeah. can understand why you chose that over the high school of musical and the musical of the series. Olivia yeah, Rodrigo too. wasn't going to be there. So why bother? But wasn't she there? No. Okay. I thought she was. So that shows you how much. Now, as far as I know, but from what I heard, she was not there. And I was, it was the day I wore my Olivia outfit. So like she would have seen a fabulous outfit. She, she would have. Snap, snap. <sighs> Um, um, go ahead. But we like I I was thinking of doing the parks and like the, what's coming to the Disney parks panel. But like, did you do the like, Marvel panel? I did not because those fools lined up at five a.m. and the line to get in for the standby was closed by five fifteen a.m. Oh wow! Um, and most of those people stayed up overnight and like tent slept in the street to get into that. No, don't need to. Don't care that much about Marvel, Star Wars, or the <sighs> Avatar. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Avatar. It's Disney's now too, right? Yes. Yeah. Just what Disney needs more money. Um, I want to ask the question to end all questions for this segment. And that is, what did you take from the weekend? Was there anything that you're like, actually, besides the Little Mermaid, is there anything out of that weekend that you're going, okay, Disney has a good plan moving forward? Or let's be honest, Disney's been hit and miss lately. Uh, from my perspective, the Marvel TV shows have been kind of going downhill. Some of the movies that have, they've been releasing, Pinocchio, Little Thor, Love and Thunder. Let's just not talk about those for a few. Um, was there anything that made you go, okay, Disney's found their groove? Or are we expecting some hit and misses again this year? I mean, there's always going to be hits and misses. I will say the the only panel I really got to sit in for movies, because I didn't do the Marvel Star Wars uh, Avatar one, that one. I don't know what's coming for that, but the live action stuff looks really cool. Other than Mufasa, we did not ask for a live action CGI lion prequel to the Lion King. Nobody asked for it. Nobody wanted it. If it was the animation, like the original Who's playing style, Mufasa? Who's playing Mufasa? Did, did they announce It's like that? a baby baby. It's like a child. Oh, so it's like way back when. Yeah, it's like prequel of like him being this like lost little thing and like getting adopted or some shit. I don't no, not for me. Nobody asked for it. You can, and the general vibe was, why did we get this? Nobody wanted this. But like a lot of the live action stuff, the Haunted Mansion's one that they told the director, you can go scary with this. We actually want. So it's going to be maybe Disney's first like actual horror movie. Well, I feel like Disney has been pushing the envelope a little bit on those movies. They're like even watching some of the Disney Plus shows. There's a lot more swearing in them than originally you would imagine a Disney movie or TV show. I think they're trying to open up and not be that child T uh, company anymore. And they're trying to be the family company where you could be nine or 24 year old kid watch or 24 year old person watching this or a five year old girl watching this and there's something for everyone right yeah i mean especially with these conventions it's primarily was adults it wasn't like there's was a lot of kids running around it was mostly adults would you today. want kids right no around? i'm not i'm not i'm not advocating for that don't bring your kids um, 
<laughs> but like it's it's becoming like a huge pop culture. Disney kind of is pop culture right now. Pop culture is actually mainstream. And I think they've realized that and realized if they want to keep this kind of stranglehold they have with all these different like areas, they have to adapt. And is so, Disney the new Netflix? I think so. Netflix has kind of fallen down. It has, hasn't it? Because it, I was, it, we're, my husband and I were chatting about that last night when we were uh, upstairs watching it because he finally tests negative, thank God. So we were watching last night and we're like, there's nothing on Netflix anymore that appeals to us and we can watch just Disney Plus for 12 hours. And I've been watching Criminal Minds on Disney Plus, for God's sakes. Criminal Minds on Disney, Disney Plus. Disney Plus owns everything. <laughs> they like, literally. Do. <laughs> so, like, literally. But um, yeah. Disney Plus is the new giant in this yeah. streaming world war, isn't it? Yeah. And they won a lot by getting a lot of the TV shows people like. And <laughs> when they bought Fox, they basically decided they were going to steamroll everyone. Yeah. But I mean, it's really like there's a lot of great stuff coming in that realm in terms of the animation. The Pixar movies look really cute. There's the new one, Elemental, that's coming out this year. Um, There's one that's coming out in two years called Wish, which is going to be this new, like they're taking the the Lucas style, but they're also mashing it with the um, like Disney Renaissance style. And it's this really cool, like watercolor style animation that's looking really gorgeous. Ariana DeBose is voicing the main I know her person. now. I know her You sure now. do. And Julie My- Julia Michaels is writing the music for it. I don't know who that is. She has one good song, and you're going to ask me what it is, and I don't know it. Um, wow. Bring a knife to a gunfight, why don't you? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me, what's the song? And I, I don't know. Um, um, so we are in the realm of the next because the d23 is it a yearly thing is it a bi-yearly thing so it was every other year and then with the pandemic it became a every a third year so now people are confused if it's going to continue the every other year or if they're going to bump it three years to get it back on odd years or even no odd years and but people are also worried because it takes place in california and they don't want it to take place during the Olympics, which in 2028 are going to be in LA. Are they in 2026? The, well, the, no, the 2028 Olympics are going to be in LA. I thought they were 2026. Is it? No, I thought it's 2028. 2028 is Winter Olympics. Is it? Yeah. Am I huffing glue? I think I'm having glue. No, you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. 2026 is the uh, Winter Olympics because tw- I should know that as a Calgarian who, uh, whose husband was instrumental in trying to bring the Olympics to Calgary in 2026. So that shows you how much I was paying attention, but it is 2028. You're right. I remember because when I was working at Banana Republic uh, in LA, what, 10 years ago? 10, 12 years. No, not 10, 12 years. Oh, a few years ago, I was like, I need the entirety of the Olympics off for 2028 because I will not be driving in LA during that. My boss was like, you're so funny. And I'm like, no, no, no. You think I'm joking. I'm putting that request in right now. I may not be here at the time, but in case I am. (laughs) Yeah. In case I'm still rattling around Banana Republic, like the ghost of Christmas past, I need the Olympics off because I'm not driving. That's why you take a bus. Take a bus everywhere. Absolutely not. In LA, you wouldn't get anywhere. Buses barely run, and when they do, they drive right past you. It's not a, it's not a friendly city to pedestrians. Gavin News, Newsom better do something before 2028 about the traffic in LA. That's all. Well, they're building a lot of subways to try and move people around. That we'll see. That won't work. We'll see what happens. We'll see the journey. I won't be there, so I'm very happy now. Well, my <laughs> last question on this is, sure. is, it, is it always like, so D23, so is it Disney 2023? And then like the one before that was like D19 or D17? Or is it always so, D23? It's always D23. And it's the D stands for Disney. 23 stands for 1923 when the Disney company was formed. Oh, so this was the 100th anniversary. It is. So there's a new opening to all the Disney movies we're going to see with like a cute little like hundred and like a woohoo and all this journey going on. And it's like a whole moment. They were really pressing it up for 2023's hundredth, the hundredth year. Did you get any souvenirs? I did get some fun little 
trinkets and things. And things. <laughs> Good time. I did. I got an ornament because um, they always Hallmark always does an exclusive D twenty three ornament. I have it right here. And he plays a little song. I want that. You twist the little radio handle and it plays a little song. My I husband, also my husband has been very upset because I've been buying up uh, Hallmark Disney ornaments very left, right, and center lately because the Christmas tree goes up in less than 40 days. I also got, as your favorite movie, some Thor Love and Thunder collector cards. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a shameless plug for another show that you're on. Uh, yeah. You you were a guest. You were a weekly commentator on another show called The Block Talk with Michael yeah. Block. And in your post D twenty three recap, you said there was a card game that you wanted. Yes. So what is? I'm a board game fan. I'm a board game freak. I love card games. I love games. What is this game? Because I want to try and find it. Well, it's not going to be released fully till fall of 2023, but for, they were releasing every day, three, there's a set of, there's seven cards that have been like physically made. Six of them were in a pack. Like there was a pack of six that are, they were going for $50 that are like holographic versions of six of the different characters you can play with. And then they were only dropping 300 of the sets each day. Myself and two of my other friends, we went to the booth, we looked at it, we're like, mm, I don't know if I want to spend $50 on, like in my hand, I don't know if I want to spend $50 on this. We were standing in line, we, we were all talking, we're like, wait, we all had the same thought, we should just go do it, let's go buy it, to, like later after whatever. Saturday walked over, and then was informed that they sold out, the convention hall opens at 9 a.m., they sold out by 9.15 a.m. Oh, and I went, wow. Fuck. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go right, like fresh, like run there Sunday morning to get there to try and be one of the people for these 300 sets. I did not make it. I was at 9:06, and I capped the line. I'm like, nope, we're not giving out anymore. The wristbands to buy them are gone uh, because they were selling for three thousand dollars on eBay. So you buy them for fifty dollars. If you want them, great. If not, it's three thousand dollars for this. And it's going to be a game like, like Pokemon or Magic or whatnot. It's going to be that sort of a game. And then they were giving out the seventh one they had was this little like Taylor Mickey guy that's selling for like 100, 150 bucks on the internet right now. Um, but I managed to get those. They had a lot for everybody, which is why those weren't so limited. Because I got one. My mom got one she gave to me. And then my friend Courtney got one that she gave to me. Because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go there and get it like before they're gone. And she's like, I'm going up right now to go buy some stuff. I'll swing by and pick you up one. Cause she's like, I have zero interest. I'm not a nerd. And I'm like, great. Well, I am. So you're going to sell yours on eBay to make a hundred bucks. I don't know. Part of me is like, yeah, that's sh I should. But then I'm like, what if it's like the best card in the game? And in a year when it's released, you realize it's like the top card that you want. Because some of these cards, I mean, my brother played Yu-Gi-Oh! forever and he'd have cards he'd open up. He'd be like, this is a $500 card. Like if it can become a $500 card, I got three of them. Well, and I, I guess... do, I am interested in the game. Like I'm not a big like card game player. I play Pokemon a little, but like if anything, I like to collect them for the art. Yeah. Um, but like if this game is one that I enjoy, I, I like Disney. And if it's actually kind of fun, I might give it a try. Hey, we'll see what happens. Maybe we will bring you back on to talk about this mysterious game that we do not know the name of it. Lorcana. Lord Canna. Lorcana. L-O-R-C-A-N-A. On that note. <laughs> Let's turn to our next big topic. And it's still in the same vein of uh, that weekend of D23. And the big news out of the Commonwealth during the last few months, which has gripped most of the nations of the Commonwealth and has gripped the television and entertainment world, is the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, the ruler of the Commonwealth, the defender of the faith, queen of canada um i'm just going to do a shameless plug here it hit me hard as a monarchist as a united empire loyalist it hit me hard the passing of the queen i was in a live stream at the time 
Um, and I will always remember that because I have it on record of sh- the moment I n- found out the queen was passed and uh, it kind of took me back. I-, I know your thoughts on the monarchy as a American, as a believer of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Listen, uh, we love Lizzie. I am uh, sad that it's the ending of an era and it's the beginning of the Charles era of the Commonwealth. So we we shall see how this unfolds. I know I'm not gonna, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I just want to say, uh, God save the king. And um, it was a good run. Seventy two years on the throne is quite a significant time on that uh, as a monarch. So God bless Queen Elizabeth the second, the late Queen Elizabeth the second. There's my shameless plug. Yeah, I was, that was in mourning. I literally wore moment. black for like a good like two weeks. I'm done. <laughs> I'm still in mourning. I'm in black now. I knew I was talking about this, so I put on the black t-shirt. <laughs> okay, it was sad. I cried. I literally cried. And I, I feel like you and I had a little bit of a moment because you sent me something and then I said, that a-hole. And I got nothing from you afterward for like a good two days. I was like... I feel like I just pissed him off or no, 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 no. He just I went, was like, Oh shit. I just touched a button there. No, I'm very irreverent about a lot of things, especially celebrity deaths. I don't know if I've talked about it here or if I've yeah. talked about it elsewhere, but like celebrity deaths don't impact me. If I don't know who it is, like if I don't know you personally, like it's sad, but it doesn't, I'm not gutted. And so I'm going to joke. I'm going to, I'm going to find memes and jokes and, and, it was right around the time of probably another topic coming up of a certain someone starting in a musical. And I fully thought it was funny to share a meme of the, uh, the queen thought Leah Michelle was getting too much attention. Um, and I think that's what it was that you were like, you asshole. I'm like, okay, we can't joke about this yet. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say you asshole. So it was from Patty Bore or, okay, the tweet was from her and uh, it was, the queen obviously thought Leah Michelle was getting too much attention this week. And I said, and I quote, so this, this, this shows you how, like we talk on a regular basis for the audience right now. At 1220, I'm sorry, at 1219, Michael sends me that, uh, that tweet. At 1220, I say, wow, effing b like i spell it out i i i go i go full bore did not hear from him for five hours <laughs> listen i'm like okay he's a morning i won't we can't meme yet um <laughs> five hours and then it was well bernard shaw died as well <laughs> um we can laugh yeah. now we can laugh now I was on an airplane or was on the airplane actually coming out. And we, as we went to take off where I was just reading the news and I saw a news article, Royal family rushes to queen Elizabeth's side at Windsor castle. I want to say is where she was. Belmoro. Bell. Yeah. And then I I said, Oh, I bet you the queen's not making it out of today. If she makes it out of the week, I'll be shocked. And my mom goes, no, no, she's fine. And I go, no. And then this woman sitting next to my mother goes, I'm sorry. What about the queen? And I'm like, her whole family's rushing to her family's side. She has till the weekend. I bet you she's gone. And the woman's like, I don't, you know, my sister. And I'm like, girl, I'm not, I don't need your whole life story. But like, the, y'all need to prepare because the queen is not going to be alive by Sunday. And everyone, like all the people around me are like, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. And I'm like, nobody rushes their entire family along with Harry and Meghan. Well, Harry. Well, she was there. No, she, wasn't. she didn't go to the side of the queen, but she was in. And at the time, the reports were saying she was rushing there too. That's when I knew. I'm like, she's on death's door. She, she was in Germany the entire time. Oh, well, the, all the initial articles I read before getting on the plane, this is what she said. We landed. As we landed five minutes before I was able to turn my phone on is when the news broke that she died. And I immediately turned my phone on. I went, well, the queen's dead. And my mom goes, oh, what? And I'm like, Lizzie's dead. Queen Elizabeth. Lizzie. And Queen then Elizabeth the second. And then she's like, well, that Charles better step down. And I said, I agree. I don't like Camilla or Charles. I don't. I really don't. I'm sorry. Do you, you think this do you think me. the crown season five is going to impact their popularity? 
So it was announced by Netflix earlier this week, like literally a week after he becomes king, well, two weeks after he becomes king, that season five of The Crown is dropping in November. November, I think 19th or the 11th, one or the other. And I, I literally sat there and I went, that's a bull move if I've ever seen it because you're basically, this whole season is about Charles and Diana and the divorce and all that. And I'm sitting here going, could you not have waited till he, like, the coronation? No. Uh. <laughs> um, and then we know how season six is ending now, unfortunately. Surprisingly, no. It's not going to end with her passing? No. In well, his it, could, it, it could now. It could now because of the change of everything. But originally, what it was going to be, it was going to lead up until about 2010, and that was it. And because they didn't know, but it could change now, but I it makes perfect sense to end it now that they know when she actually's passed. And mm-hmm. so, and they can deal with all the Harry Meghan stuff and get all that drama in there. And the William pegging issue. Oh my God, obsessed. Obsessed. Fucking obsessed. Um, I'm curious because I know we were talking about I, the Nostradamus thing that came up with the guy in Australia. <laughs> I'm super curious because Nostradamus predicted the year she died and, and the age of her and all this other shit. Nostra- listen, Nostradamus, I don't believe in this kind of shit. Nostradamus is shit I believe in because he's predicting. I don't believe in this shit as I'm about to tell you exactly. No, but like, I don't, but like, this is one that, like, if I were to be like hardcore, like, this is the one because I mean, he predicted 9 11. He's predicted a lot of shit correctly. So I will not be surprised if when the crown drops in November and Charles is got a push to be evicted and step oh down, gosh. we don't see, we don't maybe see someone else come and lead the way maybe william? not this dude from australia it might be william it might be harry it can't be harry it has to be william line of succession booed harry's got a long time before he gets it because it goes harry then it goes william got then all three children it got it, exactly <laughs> and how do you think that's gonna go over <laughs> i mean game of thrones did it yeah but <laughs> wow I'm just saying, Game of Thrones did do it. You really don't have any sympathy for these people, do you? (laughs) I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, this is literally the closest thing I'm going to get to live action Game of Thrones. (laughs) Okay. On that note, I want to turn to a person that you mentioned and... (sighs) Dear God, I can't believe I'm talking about her on the show, but here we are in 20. Don't spell it. She won't know what you're spelling. <laughs> exactly. I want to talk about Leah Michelle, Rachel Berry. She got the role she has been dreaming about for her entire life. Standing ovation after standing ovation after standing ovation after six standing ovations for singing the songs she sang on Glee. Did Rachel Berry come out as, uh, I don't even know the name of the character, but... Fanny Bryce. Fanny Bryce in Cabaret... Funny Girl. Girl. Wow. This shows you how much I pay attention. Um, So, Michael, you are the uh, entertainment theater guy, Broadway guy. What were your thoughts? Because we all saw the... We all saw the leaked uh, Twitter videos and all the leaked videos from that night. What was your thoughts? I mean, when you fucking put your best friend in the front row, front and center, and he stands up two friends and he stands up every time you fucking shit on stage. I mean, yeah, they're all going to stand up. Also, you stack the audience with supporters alongside the critics. Is that true? Oh, yeah. There was tons of like Rachel Berry Glee fans there also that they like got in there it's not it like that's not like they standing ovation for her for coming like coming walking onto the stage her first standing ovation of the six that she got was because she walked onto the stage like i'm sorry we're applauding a racist for being back after she did zero actual apologizing not on my watch um it was not standing ovation worthy. I'm sorry. I don't. Every clip I, I, I agree. Saw. I agree. I don't know. I don't know funny girl. Uh, funny girl that well. Uh, I, I I've seen Barbara Streisand uh, the movie. I can tell you, I didn't like that either. But so I'm going to say something very controversial. Ooh, do it. <laughs> 
it's not a good story and it's not good music and people freak out because Barbara is the re Barbara sang that the hell out of that score. She didn't act very well. She sang the hell out of it. And that's why people like it and why it's never been able to have a Broadway revival because Barbara ruined it for everybody. She sang the literal fuck out of that music. And it's hard music. As someone who just did Don't Rain on My Parade in Which a cabaret. Was fantastic, FYI. I saw it. He sent it to me. He said, I want a standing ovation. I would have given you one. I would not have Thank needed you. to be fluffed. I would have been like, damn right, better than her, hers. Um, Thank you. Uh, but oh like God. that moment, like ugh, it's not a good show and like, it's not great music. It's really hard to sing to. And so it just eats people alive. And especially with all the drama going on behind the stage with Beanie Feldstein and, and that it just, it's not a cute look. And yeah, Leah Michelle's singing it. The, so let's the, talk about well. Leah Michelle and sure. can she read? No. Okay, what is this joke? Because I saw it on the internet and you said you wanted to talk about this for a few seconds. I was like, I don't get this. Like, is there an actual meme or an actual, like, true story where she can't actually read? So it's a conspiracy theory. The theory is that she started Broadway as a child and she started Broadway, like, in leading roles and, like, consistently had leading roles. So people were, like, as a joke, because she was she's racist and she's problematic, they were like, can she read? Like, she's kind of not, like, it started out as a joke making fun of her. Like, maybe she didn't learn how to read because she's been in the limelight all her life. And then she doesn't help it when she goes and, like, you see videos of her and the rest of the cast, like, singing things, and they all have, like, their music in front of them that they're looking at, and she has it memorized and doesn't have any music in front of her. Or, like, the teleprompter is going... And like normally when you're at an award show and you're reading the teleprompter, like you literally look at someone like reading the teleprompter, whereas she's like, and just giving her speech, not looking anywhere but the teleprompter. And it's like, yes, she probably just memorized it because she's psychotic. But then this whole like, it just, it took on its life of its own and it's funny. And then out of nowhere, she gave an interview talking about the show where she was like, yeah, and all these awful vicious memes about me not being able to read aren't cool and it's because I'm a woman and blah 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 it's like no it's because you're a racist piece of shit but sure I guess pop off on sexism and then that literally the internet was like you're a bitch you can't read go fuck yourself and then she hopped on TikTok posted a video and then immediately posted a second video like a day later where she's calling Jonathan Groff and asking her to read the comments to him asking him to read her the comments because she can't and like put herself in on the joke. It's like, and then everyone's like, that's so funny. That's genius. It's like, no, you fell for her manipulative trap. The first, I don't know who that PR person was. They got fired. The second one telling her to make this TikTok and make it a joke and be in on the joke. Because now everyone's like, this Leah Michelle can't read thing isn't funny anymore because she's in on it. That's how you do it. PR people take note. If you want to like spin it for your client when there's shit like this going down, make them in on the joke and have them start posting and like, owning the joke because then it's not funny anymore yeah i have a quick question for you sure i have been on this broadway kick as you can as you i love it exactly i have a sort of a trivia question for you and i I know this is not the trivia show but i'm gonna ask you just because i found it interesting can you name the two hosts of the tony awards who when they were hosting won for best actor in a musical one for best actor in a musical yeah while they were hosting the show there's only been two in the last 22 years i'm trying to think in the 22 years probably hugh jackman for the boy and oz yep trying to think of the other one i can see it Oh, was it Harvey Firestein? No. Nathan Lane in The Producer. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot he won a Tony Award. I try and block He's that He's won part three. Out. I hate that. 
He won the I Emmy. hate that so much. Do you know what Kristen Chenoweth won for? Yeah. And that's my new philosophy. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. Because yep. she literally performed the song, walked off stage, and then walked back on in her costume. Because she, they were like, you won. And she's like, I'm dressed as in the peanut. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I went through it. Like I said, I went through a Tony Awards Broadway, uh, uh, like, like complete mind bend for the last few days. What is the best opening? There is a correct answer. Ooh. There is a correct answer. I know, but I have two and I don't know which one you want me to answer. So I don't want to say what, what is it? It's bigger by Neil Patrick Harris. Mm. His like third or fourth time hosting. Mm, I would disagree with that. You're not going to say Ariana DeBose. No, 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 no. I'm going to say uh, when he did the Book of Mormon. The year before he did Bigger. No, because there was Mormons in that one too. The Book of Mormon and it had the Matildas and it had. Was that Bigger? Yeah. Okay, then, yeah. There was the magic trick going on with Pippin. Yeah, and can we all agree that Kevin Spacey was a horrible host? Oh, yeah, Kevin Spacey was terrible. Um, I also did not like, um, what's his name, Uh, James Corden's hosting. I didn't like Hugh Jackman hosting. I will say Sean Hayes. Hugh Jackman hosted for a long time, too. I know, I didn't like it. He was like, every year it seemed like he was on that show while he was doing Wolverine. I was like, what is this? Like, are you trying to prove that you're not like the macho man of Wolverine? No, he's trying to prove that he's still is hireable by Broadway and that he wants to be hired by Broadway because he likes Broadway and prefers it. He's done interviews where he's talked about how he was in Oklahoma, went and did this audition for Wolverine and was like, I'm probably not going to get it, whatever. And like would still fight to try and get shows on Broadway or the West End because he wanted to do Broadway because ultimately that's what makes you a better actor because that you can't, you cannot fake eight days a week on that stage. Yeah. Whereas with film, you can keep cutting and pasting till you get the right take. We, we are in a weird moment right now because about two months ago when we had our theater Lights of Broadway rundown in July, we talked about uh, the longest running show that is the Phantom of the Opera and how we did not see that it would ever come to an end because it was just one of those shows. It was the staple of Broadway, but it was announced this month that the Phantom of the Opera is coming to a close. Shocked? Yes. And then I looked at the metrics and I'm less shocked. And then I heard the rumor and I'm even less shocked. Okay, so let's go with the first one first. What do you mean by the metrics? So you can, Broadway League posts every two weeks um, that how the show is, how shows are mm. doing. They post the gross, how much the capacity is selling for the, two, for the week, how much um, like the average ticket price, the, like if it made, like if it's up or if it's down, like it posts all those metrics. And it's been at like 70% capacity average, 70, 75% capacity average for a while. Um, so it's not, it's selling. I mean, that's, Normally, you'd be like, wow, 75%. That's amazing. On uh, Broadway, you kind of need to be at 90% to be considered successful and to justify a run. It was losing about a million dollars a week. Okay. Now let's go to the rumor. What rumor? The rumor. And this is all rumor, alleged, alleged, alleged. I don't know for sure. The rumor is that it is closing because they're moving it to a smaller theater. Because it is very well known it is very well sought after it's the one people the tourists beg to come see but it also needs a refresher and so what would be the longest running show now what would be the next staple of that broadway i think it's chicago 96 is chicago lion king or chicago um lion king would have came out after 97 when it was in theaters Lion King started, no, 94 was when Lion King was in theaters. Oh. Let's see. I don't know when it opened. But anyway, um, so it would be Chicago or the Lion King? 
Yeah, it would be Chicago or the Lion King because people are now freaking out that Chicago is going to close. But Chicago literally, even at like 80, 85% capacity, its budget is like $3 and a nickel. They're bringing in so much money. Like you can look at the gross each week and they're still up by like a lot of money. Chicago's not going anywhere. And it's also the one that they just fly people into stunt cast and it just resells tickets every time. That one we probably won't see go anywhere. Lion King is still selling incredibly well. Wicked is still doing all right. So is Book of Mormon, but we're seeing a lot of the bigger. Well, like the music man, there. right? The music well, the man music- is coming to, to an end. It was a, uh, t- it was just a revival in 2022, but um, yeah. it's coming to an end here as well. But that happens. That not this is the big thing. There's limited theaters on Broadway, and I think I've said that. Yeah. I've said that as well. There's limited theaters. Everything comes to an end. Dear Evan Hansen coming to an end. Great. Like it's it was time. It ended from away. too, didn't it? Yep, it's, it's already officially done. done. It's officially oh. done now. Come from away, I think is about to be officially done. Like great, a lot of great. Canadians are going down to see that right now too. You should. It's incredible. I really would recommend people see it. Um, and the original cast, two of the original cast members are going to be in the finale. One of which is Tony nominated Jen Colella in the role that she was playing. That she got Tony nominated. She's incredible. Um, Everything, everything ends. I don't, I, I was even, I think, saying in that, when we talked about Broadway, that 30, that it was time for Phantom to kind of end. It's been there forever. The tour is more updated and revolutionary. We also aren't getting like regional theaters doing it or community theaters doing it. Cause that's where you, when regional theaters, community theaters get their hands on it. That's when you start to see a lot of like other really creative stuff come out. And then when it gets revived, they take some of the best parts of everything and they make a new revival. And then like it, shows get better when they do that and they can do that. Phantom has never had to been able to do that. Sure. Uh, we'll see. But mm, the next crop of shows, it looks pretty good. We talked about that later on earlier as well. So, so October should be a fun uh, adventure into Broadway and see what happens there. Yeah. Particularly with Sesame Street. I'm excited to see that. I'm really excited to see that. I just, I love puppets and it's off Broadway. It's theater row. It's a cute little theater. You can get tickets for 39 bucks, but like, it's just a cute little show. It'd be 45 minutes. Probably it's fantastic. Cause that's where they did Winnie the Pooh, which is now on tour. And it's the same group that did Winnie the Pooh, the musical. That's what, that's what I need more of in my life. Like fun, like puppet musicals. We, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I want to turn to some celebrity news now. Sure. And I want to first start off with one that kind of, uh, we talked about a little bit in August, but it made bigger news in September. And that is Ezra Miller. He is gone around the bend. He has gone crazy, hasn't he? Yes. Okay. So for those who don't remember, Ezra Miller got into a fight in Japan and Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. He kidnapped some people and now he started started a cult. And that's where the big news came out this month was that he started a cult and people were actually attracted to it. What's going on here? They are... I don't even know. I don't know why, how this was allowed to happen. Um, they now since said they're seeking treatment, which like great for them, but at the same time, they're just, I don't know. I think it's time to just let the ship sail. We have to do, stop do you think the flash people. is going to be released? Yes. You think so? A hundred percent. Okay, because I know you said that you you said that in last month. I just thought with all the new information that's coming out about him, you think no Amber Heard still has a career. Ezra Miller still will have a career. Listen, people are ready to villainize her. Everybody loves a comeback. And so what they'll do is they'll paint Ezra Miller. Leah Michelle comebacks. Fucking Leah Michelle. People love a comeback. I hate it. I don't want a comeback. If you are doing some fucked up shit, you don't get a comeback. If you want a comeback, you have to go the route of literal treasures. Like? Brandon Frazier. Exactly. I am, okay. I, I, I did not want to take too much time on this, but I, I we talked about it a little bit last month, but 
Brendan Fraser is making a comeback in a epic way. He has a new movie out called The Whale, which uh, we talked about a little bit last month, but I want to plug it again. It looks amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It was dropped at uh, one of the film festivals. I don't know which one. I, I apologize. But he got a six minute standing ovation for his performance as the lead character in this movie. Um, Brandon Fraser, for uh, those who don't know, had some uh, health issues after filming uh, The Mummy, and he was sort of out of the spotlight. And then while he was out of the spotlight, he came forward and said he was uh, the victim of an assault from a movie producer. And there was some concern that Brandon wasn't telling the truth. And then after a while, it finally came out that he was telling the truth and everyone feels bad because they didn't believe this kind of big star in the 90s and early 2000s. And now they feel bad for him because they kind of vilified him for trying to take down the person who assaulted him. Society didn't vilify him. The media Hollywood, and Hollywood, Hollywood did. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. I apologize. You're right, Michael. Hollywood and the media vilified him because they were taking down this because this was right before the whole Harvey Weinstein thing. And this is the whole and he, he did a, an amazing interview with a, another uh, a show. And I forget the clip that I, I, I saw it off. And I do apologize where he said it, you have to believe men as well. In the world of sexual assault, you, it's great to believe the women and you should believe the women, but you also have to believe the men who come forward with these stories because in Hollywood, let's be honest, it's a very sexualized uh, industry where producers have used their weight and their power to get what they want. And whether that be a male or a female, you should always believe them. Agreed. Agreed. Sorry. Sorry. There's my there's my rant about Brandon Fraser today. No, but I mean, it's the movie's now getting a little bit of criticism, mainly because of content and because it could be potentially really triggering to people who have suffered with weight gain and trying to lose weight and obesity. And it, but no, everyone is even the criticisms like his performance isn't what's probably it's the story. That's problematic. I think, he, I think he's a nominate for an Oscar. I think I Hollywood think he's winning. I, I think, think he's winning. It, I agree. I think Hollywood has to give it to him. And I, I say that with all respect because he, there could be a better performance out there, but I think Hollywood is going, oh, fuck, we fucked with this guy. He's done an amazing job on this and I've not seen it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. he is uh, the odds on favorite right now to win the Oscar in the in 2023. Him and Rose McGowan were the two biggest names I think that were that came forward with regards to the Me Too movement before it happened and trying to like discuss it and disclose it. And both of them got blacklisted by Hollywood. Yeah. Rose McGowan then went on a tirade and, and kind of jumped off the deep end with some of what she was saying once it did kind of come out and people were trying to be like, we're so sorry. She kind of was, she went angry and and has continued to be blacklisted, which is a shame because she has every right to be angry. And Brendan Fraser kind of did not, which is why he still has, or is now getting a comeback career. Um, so that's also something to kind of keep in account too, is there's going to be probably more people that come forward about everything that's happened. And Rose McGowan also deserves a chance. And that's my little platform i i I agree with that as well i agree with that completely as well um i want to turn to a story that i have no idea what this is all about all i know it was the spit heard around the world we all heard the slap heard around the world earlier this month but this was the spit that was heard around the world which according to stephen colbert's the late uh, the late show with stephen colbert and olivia wilde there was no spit this is the media and the internet blowing it out of proportion and that that is Olivia Wilde's new movie with Fiona uh, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, Chris Pine. 
Michael, take this away because I have no idea what this is about. All I know is the spit. Was it a spit or wasn't a spit? Go ahead. I I, I feel like I texted you all this drama too because I feel you like did, and I tried to follow like, it. It was just in the midst of the morning of Elizabeth the second. We were sad for Lizzie. I get it. Elizabeth the second. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> so the movie's name is. Don't worry, darling. Olivia so this Wilde's is a, this is Olivia Wilde's first directorial debut, right? Yes, the media frenzy on this, or not the media frenzy, the drama, and that has followed this movie is unhinged. Mm. And to really kind of get to the spit, you have to start with Shia LaBeouf. Okay, Shia LaBeouf was on the movie with Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh, Shia LaBeouf, they were trying to like find time to rehearse together. It didn't get time. Shia LaBeouf and Olivia Wilde had some friction regarding working together and Shia LaBeouf chose to leave the, the movie. But didn't um, she get, didn't he get fired or didn't he not? No. Have, because so that, that's Olivia I'm Wilde, confused. Olivia Wilde came out when, cause this was a no, movie people knew about, people were talking about it. Shia LaBeouf <laughs> was acknowledging he was attached to it. And then Olivia Wilde came out and was like, well, I had to fire Shia LaBeouf cause he's trash and we're hiring Harry Styles. Shia LaBeouf came forward and said, no, you didn't fire me, I quit. And Olivia Wilde said, no, I fired you. And he goes, no, but is this you? And like had texts of her begging him, had voicemails of her begging him to come back and not quit. Um, and then she uh, came forward and said, well, he didn't want to work with Florence Pugh because he thought she hated her. And then he came forward and was like, I thought Florence Pugh hated me because you told me she did. And then he was like, I'm texting with Florence right now. We're fine. And then, so Harry Styles is now in the movie. Yeah. Oh, Harry Styles, for those who have been living under a rock for the last few years, One Direction fame. Mm-hmm. And then Harry Styles is in the movie. Him and Olivia Wilde start this very sordid affair on set. Because at the time, she's dating Jason Sudeikis. Of has children. Ted La- of De- Ted Lasso face. Children with S- Jason Sudeikis. No, they were married because she served him divorce papers. Or he served her divorce papers at her, like, a movie screening or like a comic-con panel reading or something like that and everyone was on her side and then Florence Pugh was like I was actually really uncomfortable filming Florence Pugh comes out and says I'm really uncomfortable with this movie because the entire time we were shooting Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles were like fucking on set making out on set in front of everybody and then Jason Sudeikis would come and she would be all lovey-dovey I love you blah 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 with Jason Sudeikis while everyone was in the room like we didn't just watch you like get dicked down by Harry Styles in front of everybody. And it was the most unprofessional set she's ever been on. And Olivia Wilde was like, that's not true. That's not true. And like, then allegedly Harry Styles has now spit on Chris Pine and Chris Pine's like, no, that never happened. And Harry Styles is like, I would never do that. But like, there's like videos and photos of him. Like, like people dissected it better than the Zypher film of JFK getting shot. Like, it's just falling apart and despite all of that the movie is like probably gonna win Florence Pugh an Oscar <laughs> it's like because apparently she's brilliant in it the movie's apparently middling like it's all right but Florence Pugh is apparently transcendent and the movie is actually kind of gonna be considered Oscar worthy and It'll might be, be nominated she, for a few things. Livia Wilde won't be nominated for an Oscar for directing. She won't get for directing, but it probably is going to get for um, Florence Pugh. A couple of the acting performances also might, but she might have a chance of actually winning. And it's It'll, just unhinged. So, okay. This, this story, this movie has become a big, like the, the drama behind the movie is more te- uh, like, tantalizing than the actual movie itself like i don't even want to see the movie i just want to hear more of the drama because it's going to come out i'm sure more is going to come out oh exactly because the part that you missed was i think it was the venice film festival that they they had the spit heard around the world i think yeah. that was the actual film festival that the whale and brandon fraser got a standing ovation as well because i think it was the same uh seats that they were in um Florence Pugh said, I'm not doing the oh, yeah. promotion. And then Olivia Wilde got the question, where's Florence Pugh? And she didn't have an answer for that. I forgot about that, where she was like, 
I'm not doing the promotion tour because she just hated how disrespected she was on set by Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde literally just sleeping around. And it's just, do you think it's she, like, go ahead. No, the people like, even like the other like side characters, like Nick Kroll has done videos where he's like, oh, they think that we're like Harry Styles or Florence Pugh rolling up for the drama, but it's just us and like getting out of the car and the, the audience be like, oh, <laughs> I can't wait for the inevitable Ryan Murphy um, biopic of this specific uh, incident. And Feud, season I, 12. <laughs> I'm so curious who's going to play every character, but I just want you to know that I think we are going to see Nick Kroll play himself. Of course he will be. He'll be like, I have nothing else to do. Come on, let's do it. But, okay, I have to ask the question to end this segment. Do you think he's bad on him? Yes! I just, I want this to be a thing because it's just unhinged. Because there's no way that you stop clapping, look down at your crotch and go, huh. Like, there's no way if you've got not got spat on, you're doing that. Unhinged. Unhinged is right. I um, love it. I love it. Let's turn to a thing that you know a lot about right now, because I got a text message from you earlier this week. I think it was yesterday, actually, saying, you know and understand football now. You understand uh, tackling. I don't know the why we're discussing sacking the quarterback. I was sacking watching the Alabama the game, roll tie. <laughs> roll tie. Roll tie. I'm talking about football because it was announced like literally, uh, I think this morning as of recording this or last night. Rihanna of oh. Umbrella is going to be the super time, the super time, super bowl, super bowl. half time. This is an American holiday. <laughs> Uh, half, halftime show uh, performer. What's your thoughts? Um, I just want to know why uh, Rihanna and Beyonce have teamed up this year to bankrupt everybody. Because now I need to go to the Super Bowl. It's the only time I'm going to be able to see Rihanna perform live. I don't need to know. I just, I need to see Rihanna perform live. And then Beyonce is going why, on tour. Why did Beyonce bankrupt you? Because I'm going to have to buy tickets. For what? Renaissance, the tour. It's happening in that summer. Didn't so that like get universally panned? No, it's universally beloved. I just didn't like it as much. I just want to see Beyonce. Okay, so you think Rihanna doing the Super Bowl? I need to go see it. Really? This is Rihanna's. Rihanna is amazing. And when was the last time she released an album? Before her kid? I don't know. And she is. She has done nothing. Nothing. And granted, she owes us nothing. But still, I would like a Rihanna album. I thought Rihanna it was going to be Britney. I thought it was honestly no. going to be Britney. No, I, I, I had a hunch it might be, but like. Do you I, think she brings on Britney? <laughs> don't, don't. If I'm not in that room and she brings on Britney, I'm going to throw up. Rihanna and Britney. And then maybe Elton John just comes in and starts performing. I don't care as much about that queen. <laughs> he just got a humanitarian award from your president, Joe Biden, for his AIDS work. Okay. That song he did with Britney Spears was garbage. It's number one. Because it's Britney. It's Britney, bitch. It's not even good Britney. It's just Britney and everybody wanted her back. And she also announced what? She's not going on tour again. I will believe that when that officially happens. Okay. So are you expecting this to lead to more? Are you expecting this to be potentially a come back for Rihanna because her kid is a little bit older now? I can't think about that because I don't want to get my expectations and hopes up. I need more Rihanna music. And if it doesn't, and if I get my hopes that, oh my God, maybe there's going to be Rihanna music this year, I will be heartbroken when it doesn't happen. I also need a Rihanna tour, which again, if that does not happen and I get my hopes up, I will be heartbroken. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I Sorry. fucking love Rihanna good for you i am i can't say i know more than two of her songs there's that one that she did with that rapper and then that umbrella song but didn't she do no air what did she do no air 
tell me how you're supposed to breathe with no air. Yeah, no. was that her? No. Who was that? Alicia. Oh, I thought that was Jordan Sparks after you said no. Oh, no, it is Jordan Sparks. You're right. I am. Um, okay. So we won't give, uh, we won't get Michael's hopes up too much by talking no, about it. No, 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 we can't. So we can't. we'll turn to another subject that you are so happy to talk about. And I'm so happy to turn it over to you for a few minutes because you are going to give us the blow by blow of CBS's big brother crowning its first African American woman. Like, I have not watched a single <laughs> minute of Big Brother. And I know everything that has happened this entire season because this gal, Taylor, is probably one of the most beloved house guests they've ever had on the show. And she has just been met with, like, de- adversity after adversity after adversity. She came in the house, and this one girl confided in her that she was really upset and didn't think she should be there. So this, she was like, listen, if you're not having a good time, this should be a good time you you should drop out like i'm not telling you to drop out but like if you're not having fun this is what this is supposed to be about and so the girl dropped out but like everyone them all these people blamed her and were like she's manipulative and she's a bitch and like attacked her and put her up on the block every week and like she had to fight to get there and then after they got rid of everybody who came from her all of a sudden this one guy who was on tiktok tried to form an all whites alliance because last year the winner um, was the first black person ever. And they had formed a, an all black alliance because black people just could not win because they would get picked off one by one in the middle. And so they all knew this. And so they're like, we have to stick together and, and play this smartly. <laughs> and so they did that. And like, it was, so she just kind of like nonstop being like, attacked in the house there was all these like live streams going on of people doing like really heinous racist ridiculous things and like getting away with it and she's the first ever winner person to win big brother and to win america's favorite player ever in 24 years she's the first person to win that and like she probably won it by a majority because it's only like only everybody was rooting for her because she just kept nonstop getting like attacked by every person in the house, like forever. I, I can't say that I've ever watched. I like, I haven't watched big brother since like, I think will was the winner, like back in season two or season three. So that shows you how much I pay attention to that, but sounds like a very dramatic uh, celeb or big brother America for you. It's it's not even a show I watch. I think the only season I've ever watched was Big Brother UK when Courtney Act was on it. True. And I tried to watch the Michelle Visage one, but I hate her too much. Um, I'm just going to do a special shout out because it is September. And okay. I want to make sure that we always, always uh, promote this uh, artist because he is. Oh, did you freeze? No. Oh, you froze there for a second from on my end because you were shaking your head. Um, I want to take a moment and say a special shout out to my favorite singer. And I always, in all these episodes, I no. always ask the question, no. what the world is no. Derulo. Happy birthday, happy 30, 30, 33rd birthday to Mr. Jason Derulo himself. September 21st, it was his birthday. So that's where he was this month. Um, last conversation before we wrap up here, Michael. What are you watching? What are you paying attention to? What's new? What's happening? What's uh, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I am watching She Hulk, as I said earlier. I'm enjoying it. Madison's my favorite character, and I need her in her own spinoff now. Her it worked Wong? for Agatha. <laughs> Wongers, Wongers, and Madison sounds like the perfect, mm-hmm. perfect spinoff show. Um, and that's Madison with two D's and a Y, but not where you, where you think so. Um, I'm also watching House of Dragon and rooting for incest. And I hate that about myself. Okay, my meat, Oz. Like I watched Game of Thrones and was like, incest bad. I'm watching House of Dragons and I'm like, incest good? I'm very conflicted. That's, like, that's, the, very... that's the 30 second clip I use for this show. <laughs> No, you cannot. <laughs> like, it's very fun. And I was like, you know what? Fuck Game of Thrones. We hate them. They're the worst. They ruined the last 
ruin the show. And then I'm like, I guess I'll give it a try. And now I'm like, this looks really good. How did really you like the it. character swap? Did they handle it okay? I didn't watch last night's yet. Okay. Um, Never I'm mind. sure it's going to be fine because I've not seen the internet blowing up about it. So I'm going to assume it went well enough. Yeah. Um, but, and that, which is also brilliant to do because they're covering a lot of ground in five seasons and they have it planned entirely for five seasons. Whereas with Game of Thrones, they're like, oh, we're going to go uh, and do what we want. Well, um, we're still waiting for the seventh book of the Game of Thrones series from George R.R. R. Martin. It's coming like the freaking dragons came slow and steady um for real but what else am i watching i just watched nope i did not like it and i'm very sad because i really like his movies and i just felt that it wasn't scary enough but it wasn't like artsy enough like i feel like get out is probably one of it is still his best movie but i feel like each movie he's doing i'm liking them less and less I will say Kiki Palmer can do no wrong and Daniel Kaluuya, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performances. Kaluuya, his uh, muse, he's, a, he's, a, he's in a lot of uh, his movies, isn't he? Yeah, he's been casting Daniel Kaluuya in everything lately, which is good. I mean, Daniel Kaluuya is doing a fantastic He was job. nominated for an Oscar too. He for... won the Oscar for Judas and the Black Priest. Oh, I thought he won it for- uh, Oh no, Judas out. and the Black Messiah. I no, he, he did not win it for Get Out, but he won he... supporting for Judas and the Black Messiah. Okay. Um, he... Anything else you're watching? Um, I yes, I'm watching a lot of things. Oh, the new Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. What's your I, thoughts on that? I haven't seen it because I just haven't had the time to sit down and watch it. I like it, and it's one that they've planned five. They've planned five seasons out, so it's not like they're flying by the seat of their pants. They have a plan for those five seasons of where they're going, where each season's going to go. And it feels very, like, if you like Lord of the Rings, like, it's, like, dripping in the lore. And it's, like, dripping in little callback moments. And it's, it's really great. I'm really enjoying it. More than I thought it was going to. I hope it continues to be an enjoyment for me. Okay. Um, I feel like there's something else I'm watching that I can't remember. I'm watching the new uh, Hulu slash Disney Plus show because in Canada, we don't get Hulu. We only get Disney Plus. So everything on Disney Plus, everything on Hulu is on Disney Plus, except, uh, except the shows that aren't. And they are on Crave TV. And that is um, the new show reboot uh, by the oh. creator of the uh, Modern Family. Paul Reiser, Rachel Bloom is in it. Uh, <gasps> I yeah. love her. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Watch it. I Rachel Bloom is in uh, this show. She's awesome in it. Um, it has Johnny Knoxville in it as well. It's actually a really um, Jordan. No, who's Jordan Peele's uh, like partner in crime? Oh, Keenan. No, they had a TV show. Oh, Keegan Michael Key. That's it. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say Keegan Taylor, but it's not him. Um, Keegan uh, Michael Key is the uh, was in it as well, and it's actually a really good show. It's a, it only had three episodes so far. It looks good. I'm enjoying it. My husband and I watched the first three episodes, and we laughed the entire time. Uh, I'm watching Criminal Minds because I'm looking, uh, looking forward to November coming and the new season of uh, Criminal Minds coming back, or the reboot of Criminal Minds coming back, so I'm looking forward to that. What? Reboot? Yeah. Yeah. It didn't it just have like one year where it wasn't on the air and it's Four. already getting rebooted? Four. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, ended, oh, in, I... ended in 2018. And this is all about the serial killers of during the pandemic. Okay. And you've cut out again. No, I did I? Yeah, on my end you did. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I also started Dahmer. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. Maybe it's, once I'm done Criminal Minds and I have a sick twist it in mind, I can actually sit down and watch Dahmer because I've heard very conflicting reports about it. Well, it's getting now a lot of like, people are like, oh, this is because re- it's the families of his victims are coming forward and like, this is really like re-traumatizing Trig- us. Yes. This is like really unnecessarily triggering to the point, because I've only seen the first episode um, so I don't know where it goes, but apparently it's like a little like gore porny and like trauma porny and like, that's not cute. 
<laughs> but hey, that's what Americans like. It seems like I know. I one of my friends posted a whole status today, and it was like, uh, "Stop saying you like true crime when you just like trauma porn." And I'm like, "Ooh, <laughs> there's a difference between the two. Really? Like, there's true crime where you're like discussing a case and etc. But then there's also like a full fledged reenactment." And there's been so many documentaries and stuff. Did we necessarily need this to try and win Evan uh, Peters and Emmy? Is that what you think it is? I 100% think, because he looks like him. And it's fully stacked with like nominated folks. Like yeah. Emmy Award winner, Academy Award winner, this winner, that winner, like. Yeah. Well, here we are in a world where people just like this murder porn. Trauma porn. I'll say murder porn, as South Park would say. Um, last, last question for you. What are you looking forward to? Anything coming up in the world of Michael Nichols Pate? Um, first of all, we all need to be looking forward to Hocus Pocus 2 coming Friday. Do we? Do we? <laughs> yes. Do we? Yes. Do we really need to see Sarah Jessica Parker and Bette Midler? not in their prime anymore could we not just watch sex in the city 2 and the politician and go yeah i've seen it whoa (laughs) i'm actually very worried this movie's not going to be good i think it's going to be horrible i'm very worried Um, the only saving grace to me is kathy nanai jimmy jimmy yeah um very worried about it but i am excited at the moment um i feel like there's a lot of like really cool like movies and stuff coming out that I can't Black Panther 2 comes out in November. November, but that's November. But still, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of like movies and stuff that's up in the air. Oh, the new Halloween movie comes out. Maybe Michael really dies this time. (laughs) No, he doesn't. Um... (laughs) I'm just, yeah, I'm just excited to see what kind of comes out. There's a lot of horror stuff that comes out. Netflix is really kind of doing well with the random horror TV shows. I started The Devil in Ohio, which was actually pretty good. And I've gotten a lot of really good comments from friends to say to keep up with it because it's fantastic. But like, it's just, there's a lot of really cool stuff that comes out. And then I have a Halloween cabaret at the end of the month that I'm in. You do? Where I'm going to be singing uh, a song from Next to Normal. <laughs> Next what? Next to normal. Which is? It is the story of... No, Alice. the song. Oh, I'm singing I'm Alive. Oh, favorite song or... I actually, I, it, I want to do the show and I want to be the role that sings that song. Okay. So just to, sorry, to go back to the original movies that are coming out in 2020, in October. Um, Halloween ends? Yes. Excited. Uh that's about it the police my policeman with harry styles no pass oh no it is with harry styles pass and that is it there is literally nothing coming out this month for movies that you would watch oh that's true that's true. <laughs> hold on october 2022 movies and then in november weird al yankovich the movie comes out Oh, Pray for the Devil looks good. Oh, The School of Good and Evil, that trailer on Netflix actually might look really good. Netflix does really good, like, random little moments. Hmm. Especially during October, because that's when Midnight Mass was was released, and I really like that. I feel like you like that one, too. Oh, Hellraiser. The new Hellraiser's coming out. Okay. Um, oh, didn't Bros come out? That's or is it coming right. out? That comes out on Friday as well. Um, excited. Are you going to see it? Uh, probably. I'm a little iffy about it. I want to see it, but I'm not sure. I also really want to see Pearl and X, which comes out soon. Don't know which ones those are. Pearl is one of the ones that came out. It's currently out. And then X comes out soon, too. It's horror. If it X is not already out. Oh, there we go. Isn't Black Adam come out soon? December, I think. 
Oh. December or November, one or the other. Oh, no. October 21st, Black Adam. Oh. And it's the same day as the School of Good and Evil and The Policeman. Yeah, so no one's going to see any of those movies because DC has the tendency to fuck movies over. But did I say that out loud? Wow. Anyone excited about the I Want to Dance with Somebody, the Whitney Houston biography? When does that come out? December 21st. Oscar bait! Obviously. And then Avatar, the way... Pass. It's going to win a ton of technical awards this year. Who? It already looks stunning oh. from the trailers. House party. Not much coming out. No. Pinocchio. That's the new one's not good. The, I've not seen it, but the I... Del, the Del Toro the Pinocchio. That might be fire. Disenchanted comes out in November with Oh life. yeah, with there's a lot of stuff coming out next, like in November that's gonna be good because Halloween's tough because unless it's a horror movie, nobody's gonna co see it. Yeah, I agree. Whole oh, Lindsay Lohan has a new movie. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. What's it called? Falling for Christmas with Court Chord Ch- Chod Overstreet. Wow. Cord Cord Overstreet. Yeah. Yep. Did you just say Chord? I did. Chord? I love it. I'm going to call him Chord. Shut up. Don't don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. No, I love it. I'm going to call him Chord. Okay, Michael, we have been talking for over an hour, and I want to just say thank you so much for being a friend, traveling down that road, and back again. Okay, Golden Girls. We don't have have copyright for that. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying you're a pal Uh in the confidant. I'm screaming. We don't have the budget for those rights. <laughs> we do not have that budget. Michael, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure as always. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, till next time. Buy his book. Buy his book. Oh, that's right. I, uh, where is my book? Here's my time. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Just keep talking. $25 in America, in Canada. And yes, it's about lockdown podcasting and health. About my good old kid. What the hell's in my book? Why is there a bookmark of a... Oh, okay. <laughs> Buy my book on Amazon. Always great. With that, have yourself an excellent day. Uh, remember, get it from behind social media for at least five minutes a day. Go have a conversation because it helps our society, helps your democracy, helps us be a better people, blah, blah, blah. And with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, our entertainment rundown with Michael Nichols-Pate. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking.